Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on support vector machines of this machine learning course. In this section we consider the so-called kernel trick. We considered the support vector machine model to separate two classes, class A and class B. The model describes the separation geometrically by a boundary. And so far this boundary was linear a so-called hyperplane. We learned about training of support vector machines by Lagrangian function capital L. The constraints were reduced to Lagrangian multipliers, lambda was greater than or equal to zero. This dual formulation makes the optimization problem independent of the dimensions of the input variables. This means we can take more information from more input variables into account without additional computational costs. As we will see, we will apply variable transformations to solve nonlinear separable classification problems with support vector machines. This leads to more variables to be incorporated, so the dual formulation will be very useful to tackle this problem. Often there exists a variable transformation that transfers a non-linear separable problem into a linear separable situation. Take a look on our example. On the left side, the two classes, the light blue dots and the dark blue dots, are clearly not separable by a linear boundary. So they are called non-linear separable. However, they are separable by a parabolic boundary. So if we use a quadratic transformation of for example the input variable x1, we obtain the result displayed on the right side. Now this problem is linear separable and we can use a support vector machine for classification. Consequently, Variable transformations will help us to apply support vector machines more generally. You might wonder if it is beneficial to consider the original variables in addition to the transformed variables. Here we will look at a very simple example to clarify this. We consider a single independent variable x1 only. On the left side, the two classes the light blue and the dark blue dots are clearly separable by a linear boundary. Now, we apply an arbitrary variable transformation phi of x. This shifts the data points around. However, we still can separate the two classes by a linear boundary. The reason is because the classes cannot mix with respect to their position to the x1 axis. Next, we take a look on the right side. In this example, the classes are not linear separable. Again, we can apply a variable transformation. A good transformation now allows for separation, but even if not, it is no disadvantage to incorporate the original variables. In total, usually it is more likely that the data splits in higher dimensional spaces. So to incorporate all transformed as well as the original variables is very beneficial. So let's consider a concrete example. We have two dimensions with input variables x1 and x2. We want to perform a variable transformation to all possible second order terms. These are x1 squared, x2 squared and x1 times x2. Here we put a factor of square root of 2 in front of the term x1 times x2. This is for convenience as we will see later. If we want to take these three transformed variables in addition to our original two variables into account, we have in total five variables. 
So variable transformations can produce a lot of extra dimensions. This is why the dual formulation with the Lagrangian cost function is so useful. For this cost function, the computational efforts independ of the number of dimensions considered. But the question is, how to incorporate the variable transformation easily into the Lagrangian cost function? The variable transformation affects the dot product of vector xi times vector xj. To apply the variable transformation is straightforward. First, it is applied on the vector xi, second, it is applied on the vector xj. Then, calculating the dot product of the transformed vectors. This result is denoted by capital K, the so-called kernel function of the transformation. We will calculate the corresponding kernel function for our example. So we transform the vector xi and the vector xj individually. This gives these two vectors with now three components each. In the following, we will derive a different representation for the product of these vectors. Multiplying the product out gives x1i squared times x1j squared plus 2 times x1i times x1j times x2i times x2j plus x2i squared times x2j squared. Note that the multiplication of the two factors square root of 2 gives the factor of 2 in the term in the middle. This was the reason to incorporate this factor. Because now we can rewrite this as quadratic expression. The square root of x1i times x1j plus x2i times x2j. In this expression we have the vector components of xi and xj. So in short notation this is the square dot product of vector xi times vector xj. This gives our final representation of the transformed variable product. So we can replace the product of vector xi and vector xj just by the square root of this dot product. This incorporates our quadratic variable transformation. So far, we replaced our original variables x1 and x2 by three new variables x1 squared, x2 squared and x1 times x2. But what about our original variables x1 and x2? How can they be incorporated additionally? This can be done by adding a constant c to the dot product before calculating the square of it. We can multiply this out and see that we've incorporated the square term for the transformed dot product. And in addition, we have the simple dot product of vector xi and vector xj for incorporating the original variables. This can be generalized to incorporate higher orders of variable transformations. The polynomial kernel replaces the square by an arbitrary order denoted by d. Additionally, a weight gamma is introduced. Typically, gamma is chosen to be smaller than 1. This hyperparameter shrinks the influence of higher orders. So, to consider a lot of possible nonlinear transformations at the same time, we can use the polynomial kernel for replacement in the Lagrangian formulation of the cost function. Then, this cost function can be efficiently optimized. There are plenty of other kernel functions to incorporate other variable transformations. For example, the Gaussian kernel. It is given by the exponential function 
of the square difference vector of xi and xj over 2 times sigma. The hyperparameter sigma can be adjusted to your needs and corresponds to a standard deviation. Section finished. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. So thanks again and see you in the next section.